Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the 1200 scale uh, Bismarck build. This is the trumpeter kit and I'll be building it with the Pontos detail set. And in part one I took a close look at that detail set but this is really uh, the first build episode of the playlist. And I've made a start on the hull this week. I've not managed to get it finished, I hoped I would, but uh, the changes that I've made to the trumpeter hull have taken up quite a bit of time this week so I've not got uh, time to finish it off completely but I'll show you the work that I have done which is mainly getting the uh, stem sorted out of the ship and building the uh, insert that Trumpeter provide uh, for the underside of the uh, bow here uh, and I've also made quite a number of changes to the underside of the ship following the uh, detailed plans in the anatomy of the ship book uh, which really modifies the underside plating quite a bit. So let's get started and make the first steps along what's going to be quite a long path to getting this model completed and alongside the hood in the display case. Okay, so I'll uh, make a start then. And there's a few sections that I need to take care of with the hull. Uh, the first one is to assemble the uh, stem uh, or the bow of the ship here at the bottom and Trumpeter have moulded these two separate sections or at least two halves of a separate section and that's just so that they can accommodate the bulge here at the uh, front of the ship. So the first job I'm going to do is to take these off the runners and cement them together. That way they'll have plenty of time to dry because this area is going to need quite a bit of sanding uh, to get it all blended in nicely. And I've got a little bit of work to do at the very front of the ship here down at the bottom. Uh, because here there's some equipment related to the paravane deployment uh, stem. It was like a big pin that came out of the uh, front out of this circular hatch here uh, and I've got a bit more detail to add to that. The next job I've got to do is to modify the underside of the hull and it's a fair question to ask what's the point of doing the underside well the modification that I'm planning you can see uh, when you view the model from the side or in profile and that's because there were a couple of plates here and here on both sides of the hull and the same at the stern of the ship as well which created a box-like structure on the underneath uh, and I'll show you that on a drawing so just zooming in here the areas that I'm talking about here are these plates here which protrude into a box and the same here uh, further forward and obviously they're symmetrical both sides the same with the uh, stern of the ship just in front of the propeller shaft housings there's uh, a box section there and a box section there uh, and they just need blending in I'm going to be building those up with some plastic sheet uh, until I've got the sort of shape that I want there are a number of vents and uh, hatchways at the bottom which I'm not going to be reproducing because you can't see right underneath the ship but these profiles here that I'm talking about uh, you can see from the side as I said so they're worth doing I think. The other modification will be to just thin the uh, stem of the ship out. It was very very sharp about halfway down it obviously flared out to the top to the deck end and it flared back out here to the paravane equipment uh, at the very bottom so I'll just do a little bit of shaping of that as well just to sharpen it up I'll have the rigoles to clear off the portals I'll also check the positioning of the uh, portals as well because on the hood trumpeter had got the uh, positioning incorrect so I'll just uh, check those. We've also got some etch brass uh, vents here to cover up the uh, mouldings on the trumpeter kit. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is to glue together the uh, front of the hull here, these two sections. And because of the warp that's creating this gap, I'm going to have to reinforce it, I think, again with some plastic sheet. Uh, so first job, then that can be drying and uh, we can get it sanded a bit later on once we're absolutely confident that the glue's set. So I'll start at the front, make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. I've got uh, some reinforcing uh, card on the inside. So that'll just hold it together as well. And I've pushed a strip right along the stem as well, down at the bottom. So that's all nice and reinforced now. I'm going to leave that for 24 hours just to make sure it's absolutely set. Uh, and then we can come back, give it a bit of a clean up and fit it then to the front of the ship. The next thing I want to do is just mark up where I want the build up of this underside plate. That's what I'm going to call it for the sake of the build. So just measuring up the distance between the two bumps, we've got 78 millimetres on a 1550 scale drawing. So I'll just do a quick calculation. So that's 214 millimetres in 1200 scale. I'm using this vent here as the reference for the uh, bump at the stern. And again for the aft I'm just doing the measurement from the drawing giving us a distance of 149 millimetres. Just scaling this all off the drawings and I'm using the moulding centre line take all my measurements from.
so basically what I've done here is to cut a couple of pieces of plastic sheet and that'll just give the edge of the new moulding that we need uh, for this section. Obviously using the lines that I've marked out as a reference. I'll have to fill a lot of this in with some uh, filler. These are just to uh, mark out the edges of the shape that we need. And you can see that when we put a rule along the top, the centre line is just touching the ruler there. So it's the same all the way along. The way that I got these two shapes the same was to first of all cut a strip to the height that we wanted, so about four millimetres, something like that. Then I marked the length of the piece that I needed. And then just cut diagonally across. Just make sure you hold the part down tightly. And use several scores, don't try and cut through all at once. And you'll end up with two identical shapes and they can then be attached to the uh, underside of the hull. We'll use some filler at the side of these as well so it doesn't matter that there's a slight gap underneath. They will get smoothed out a little bit. But you do want them parallel to the centre line. So these are the outer markers, if you like, of the extensions that I'm building on the underside. What I've got to do now is fill in and smooth uh, these panels into the underside of the trumpeter moulding. So I'm just going to be using scraps of card just to build the area up. And then once I've got it more or less where I want it to be, I'll use some filler to fill the gaps in and I'll smooth the sides of these shapes in as well. So I'll just tinker around with bits of plastic card now until I get these shapes built up. I'm just uh, cutting these again symmetrically so that we get the same pattern or a similar pattern. Cutting them symmetrically like that as a pair just helps to maintain the uh, shape that we're after.
So here we can see uh, from the side profile these little steps. So uh, you don't have to worry about the underside. I'm going to have some fairly close pedestals on the underside. So you're not going to be able to see that, but uh, you can see this side profile. So I've got to repeat the same sort of process on the stern now. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, that's all four of the uh, areas built up now with the card. I now need to go ahead and get some filler on this. I might just have to pack it a little bit more with card here and there, uh, but we'll see how we go with the filler. So that's the next step for these. Okay, so that's the basic shape filled in. I've done all four. I'm going to concentrate on this forward one first of all. I'll do this one on camera and then uh, carry on in my own time uh, with the other three. So I've used two methods here. The first side, this side, I've used some sprue goo to fill in the space. Uh, that's hardened, I did that last night. And on this side I've used some plastic sheet just to bulk out the space that I need to fill. And I'm going to use some ordinary model filler just to uh, do this side. I'm going to see which one works the best. This sprue goo is extremely hard. It's uh, pretty difficult to sand actually, it's so hard. But basically what I'm looking to do when I'm sanding is to sand equally across both sides until the sanding stick meets the centre line of the hull and starts taking away plastic on the centre line. And that if I do that, I know then that I've got the correct shape and it's perfectly flat all the way across. So obviously the thing with this is to keep the stick flat to the surface and you need something fairly solid because you want to maintain the flatness of this whole space. So it's going to need to come down by quite a bit at the front. So let's try some filler on, on this side. And I'm using some Mr White putty. For an application like this where I've got so much to fill, I like to use a putty that actually uh, bonds with the plastic. So it's not like Milliput, for example, which doesn't actually burn into the plastic, this will do. Uh, and I just prefer it for an application like this. It's just a bit stronger, I think. It is less likely to flake off. Looks a complete mess at the moment. This will probably need more than one application. So I'll just leave that to dry and then I'll give it its first sanding, get this nice and flat and then we'll probably have to come back and do a little bit more filling as well. Okay so um, this is the model after another day and what I did yesterday was to uh, apply some milliput along the edges of the patterns that I'd made here. Uh, left that overnight and I've just wet sanded that back, the milliput. I've also rounded off the edges of the patterns that I made uh, and just gone around. And what you'll find is that if you've done this properly, uh, in other words, it's symmetrical one side to the other, the pattern of the milliput should be more or less the same on both sides. It's not quite, you can see I've got a wavy edge here on this particular pattern. 
So there's a little bit more work to do. I've also got, uh, after the first sanding, you can see where I've got some more application to make. So here along this uh, piece here, this triangle. So there's a little way to go. I'll just do another filler with some milliput just to patch up those little spaces that are obviously wrong. Uh, but after that, I think it will be a case of applying a coat of primer, which will reveal some of the smaller uh, errors that need to be corrected. So another patch up with some milliput, and I think we'll be getting there at that point. You can see the after the ship now. These are the uh, shapes, uh, the protrusions just ahead of the propeller shaft housings. So uh, it's coming together fairly well. I'm reasonably happy with how the uh, modifications looking at this point. Okay, so that's the second coat of milliput on there. So obviously another good few hours drying time for that. I think I've captured most of the obvious errors, but as I've uh, said before, the primer will finally tell us whether or not we've got the job right. So whilst I'm waiting for this second coat of uh, filler to set, uh, I'll do some work and sort out the bow of the ship. While I'm waiting for the main hull to finish drying up, I'll do some more work on the bow section. So much easier to do this now than once it's fitted onto the main hull. Just rounding the profile off a little bit at the front there. The next thing I want to do is to make a small cutout here at the front. There's a, an indentation which I can show you on this drawing here. So looking at this drawing here, you can see this indentation just above uh, the paravane tow line rod, which is this. But just above it, we've got this cutout uh, on the bow and there's also one slightly aft of that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a razor saw to cut a slot uh, into the hull here, just making sure that I've got it uh, perpendicular. Uh, and then I'll backfill it with some putty and shape that putty into the shape that uh, we can see here on this drawing. Just checking that that's symmetrical. And then I'll just do a little bit of work with a file just to smooth that out a little bit. Just shaping a chamfer down here onto the opening. You can see why I'm doing this before gluing it to the hull. It would be pretty awkward to do this work and manoeuvring a three foot hull around as well. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Got the chamfers on the inside.
like all work of this kind it's just the best to take it really steady just gradually close up on the marks that you've made trying to do these sort of cuts and shaping with a knife trying to do it all at once you put excess pressure on the knife blade and either break it or even worse you'll slip so it's a nice steady job until you get somewhere close then I'll just switch over to a file just to finish off and get the final slot cut out Okay, so I'm happy with those slots. I've got them uh, nice and equal both sides. I'll back that now with some plastic sheet and then we'll put some filler uh, in the space just to smooth it out a little bit. So I've applied uh, some very thin plastic sheet uh, just to back this front cut out. So it's quite a long strip and because it's thin I'm able to curve it into the front portion here. Talking about all the birds today, they're pretty noisy. I don't think I can get it to touch all the way around just because of the sort of compound angles. But we'll get it somewhere close. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it for the moment. There's some gaps around the edge just because of the uh, shape of the hull at this point. Uh, but it's going to give me some backing for this milliput as I said. So now I'll put some into these slots. That's because the uh, slots are too deep because of the thickness of the whole plastic at this point. So just pack that down. The nice thing about uh, Milliput is that you can work it with water. So it's uh, just easy to shape. Nearly there, just a bit more modelling and shaping, we'll have to finish it off with a little bit of sandpaper once it's dry, but I think overall that's not too bad.
I'm just smoothing these slots out a little bit. I've just made this uh, shape from a coffee stirrer just so that I can clear out the slot. Sorry about the uh, sun on the bench but it's helpful for me I can see all the shadows on this so it just helps to work out if you need to do any more shaping. I don't think I'm going to get it much better than that for the moment. So I'll leave it at that. Let that dry then see where we go from there. I think it's just a case of giving it a bit more of a sand down. Clean it up a little bit. I'll just get some uh, filler in the uh, scars that are left with the sprue gates. But uh, that'll do for now. I'll leave that to dry. And because it's so lovely outside, I'm going to go uh, have a bit of a break, get a beer, and sit in the sun for a while. See you in a minute. Okay, let's get this uh, bow section fitted now. Then I can leave the model for a day or so just to fully set up and uh, the last clean up before the next step. So plenty of cement on this. I'm not bothered at all about it overflowing. It's all going to need sanding down. It's a pretty poor fit really. So that's going to need quite a bit of filler uh, to sort out the seam. The profile here is slightly off but that should sand down pretty well. The other things that I've done is to fill the holes from the moulding for the uh, listening device uh, which was located in this area here, trumpeter of moulded several holes in quite a strange pattern really but if you saw the review of the Pontos set that I did uh, earlier on uh, back in part one you'll know that they provide a template to re-drill these holes in the correct uh, configuration so I've just filled those with some milliput that'll sand down and uh, we'll be able to uh, reapply the holes in the correct position the extensions that I've created here, they're still drying. So that'll be another day before I can do any sanding on this particular part. So I think that's as far as I can go uh, for this particular episode. Uh, we're already on Thursday and I've got the video to edit and upload. So I'm not going to be able to do any more practical building work this week uh, for this particular part. So I'll leave it at that and we'll decide what to do uh, for next time. Okay, so that's all I've got time for this week. Uh, the work here on the underside plating has taken quite a bit of time, probably uh, three days this week, uh, to get that how I want it. And it's still not absolutely finished. I've still got this second coat of filler to rub down and get smoothed in. Uh, I'm also going to be fairing in the bow section that I've just fitted after modifying it. I need to clear all the rigoles off the hull sides and also fit the uh, propeller shaft housings and the uh, propeller shaft mounts as well on the uh, stern of the ship. But it's a good start. I'm happy to get this modification work out of the way and hopefully in uh, part three we'll be able to get this hull finished off uh, and ready to fit the decks. So I'm now moving the Bismarck over to the Friday night premiere slot. Uh, so I'll be doing one video a week on the Bismarck uh, and I haven't forgot the Mosquito which you can see to my right. Uh, this week I've just got the replacement stencils for the Mosquito so hopefully I'll be able to crack on uh, this weekend uh, and get those stencils on and I'll probably issue 
uh, a new video on the mosquito in the next few days. So whichever build you're following, there'll be something coming up in the next uh, few days or next week. So I hope to see you then everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.